Hi, Sandy the Kentucky Crafter here. So today's project, I am going to take these pieces that are shaped like houses and I'm going to stain them. So the supplies for today, you'll need a one by six piece of wood and then some stain of your choice. I'm using Minwax Jackal Bean and a stir to stir up the stain, some rubber gloves, and paper towels. And this is what the finished product will look like. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the wood pieces. So this is a one by six. So it's six inches wide and then an inch thick. And it was, I think, around eight foot long, tall, eight foot in length. And my husband was kind enough. I just gave him the rough lines of how I wanted the houses, one to be a little bit smaller, one to be medium, and one to be large. And he cut those for me. If you don't have the tools at home, um, the folks at Home Depot or Lowe's, they will do it for you. Um, sometimes they'll do it for free. Sometimes they will charge you just a really uh, small amount of money. So you have those options. I'm going to do some staining. So I'm going to use this Minwax Jackal Bean stain. I got it at um, Lowe's. So the first thing you want to do, it's really important, is to stir up the stain. And you want to stir it really good um, as you scrape the paint stir down on the bottom you'll feel some sediment. So you'll want to make sure that gets all stirred in so that your stain color is fully mixed. And then you just wipe off the paint stir. All right, so next step is you get um, um, a clean rag, or in my case, I'm just using some paper towel. And you dip it down in the stain, get some on your paint or on your paper towel, dab it off, and then you bring it over to your wood surface and you just put the stain on. And you completely cover the wood with a single coat of stain, and then you let it sit. So I'm making these little houses. And once you have the stain all on there, a single coat, you then go back with a dry paper towel and you wipe off any excess. And then you let it dry. So it's really important to let your stain dry a good, this is, I think, eight up to eight hours. And then if you want to put a different coat, another coat on there to make it darker, then you can do that. I think I'm going to be happy with this um, shade, though. So I'm really excited. So I'm going to let these dry, and I'll start to clean up. And then we'll move on to the next step. Yay. And they're going to be so cute. Now that I have the wood pieces cut out, it's time to add some decorations to them. So I am going to add these words to the wood shapes. So what I've done is um, made the house shapes here in Cricut Design Space so I could play around with the design and see what I would like, what, what I'm going to like and not going to like. And um, so I have these words that I have um, typed up and I thought I think I would like them over here. And I'm going to do white vinyl and I did the brown and the houses to try to mimic the stain. And so each of these houses I measured the wood pieces and um, 
then made these boxes or these house shapes the same. And I ended up using, you can, um, I just found a house shape over in Cricut um, Access. So I went over here to Cricut Access and clicked on this right here, the images, and I just typed in house. And hit enter. And then house shapes showed up. And I just scrolled down till I found the house shape I was looking for. So this is the one that I used. And since I have Cricut Access, anything with a green is something that is included in my membership with them. So I click on it and it shows up down here in the corner, bottom corner over here. And then you click insert image. And then it shows up over here. So I just need the outside shape and so what I did was I hit, came over here and I hit ungroup up here in the corner. And when I hit ungroup, that made everything over on this file separate. So like I can get rid of this and hit delete. And the stain with you is still part of the house frame, but what you can do is contour that out. So over in the bottom right hand corner, there is a contour shape. And it, when you click on that contour shape, it brings everything up. And so the only thing I really want is this outside shape. So I'm gonna click all these other ones. And when I click on all these other ones, it will make them be hidden, which is what they mean by contoured out you don't want to cut them. So I click on all the ones that I don't want. And click o um, X to close that out. And there I have my shape. And so this shape, as you can see, just by default, is 5.4 by 4.26. So I needed to make them the size of my actual house shapes. So I used the little unlock button here in the corner. And when I do the unlock, then it allows me to either make it wider, make it taller, make it whatever size I need. And so that was how I was able to shape each one of these houses. So now that I'm done with this, I can just delete it. Now it's time to make the words. And the way you do that is you click on this text image over here, and then a text box will appear, and you start to type whatever it is that you want to say, whatever you want the word to be. And then once you type it, just click off of it, and then that word will appear. And so the default for the font, whenever you do that, is this Cricut Sans. And so if you wanna change the font, then you click on this down arrow right next to the Cricut Sans, and all of the different fonts show up. And so you have over here in the upper right-hand corner, you can look at all the fonts that are on your computer. You can look at just the Cricut fonts that are available to you from Cricut Access, any ones that are included in your membership or ones that you would have to pay for. And then if you click on just the system ones, this shows you all the ones that are um, that come with your computer or your iPad or your or your iPhone or your Apple, you know whatever device you're using. Um, I'm just using a PC. So these are all the fonts that come with my computer or they're fonts that I've downloaded onto my computer. And the font that I'm wanting to use today is a system font. And um, you can just search for it if you know the name you're looking for. So mine is called Barefoot Joanna. And as soon as you start to type, it will start to filter. So there's the font right there. So I click on that. 
and then it'll change my word to that font. And then you go about sizing it to the size that you want. If you aren't happy with the spacing, you can make the letters get a little bit closer together or you can spread them out. And you do that here with the letter space. So you can click on the down arrow or the up arrow and it will see how it's moving the letters closer together or further apart. So you just decide how you want them to be. And then if you're good with that, then you can figure out the sizing. You can bring it over to your shape and I find that clicking on the first letter of the word is the best way to highlight that, that uh, word. Oops. And then that size looks really good to me. And I can leave it black, but um, since I'm gonna be printing it out in white vinyl, then I can change it to white. All right, let's get them printed out. Um, house shapes and I come over to the panel over here and just hit the eyeball and then that makes it disappear because I do not need to cut these shapes out. So for each of the shapes and then I am left with these words and I'm ready. I will turn on my Cricut and I will hit the make it button and then it will bring up these words up here and I like to space them out just a little bit so I have a little bit of space between them and then when I'm ready I will hit the continue button And then it'll come up and want me to set my base material and I'm using premium vinyl today and I am just going to use the default setting and then I will make sure that I have the fine point blade installed and then let me get the mat loaded and cut them out. All right so I have the mat loaded in here and now the flashing cricket button is going and you just push that. one of the words cut out joy you can see that and I am going to weed it the first thing I like to do is burnish down the letters so that when I weed up the excess the letters will stay on there and I got this scraper you can get one of these at 143vinyl.com and then I'm going to weed it with this pen pen tool. And I also got this from 143vinyl.com. And this is it's like a ballpoint pen, but instead of um, an actual writing pen, there's just a really sharp point. And that helps you get the vinyl up. It's really cool. All right, here we go. So get in here. I usually like to start at a corner and kind of pull up the vinyl. And then once I get it, I just kind of slowly pull it up around whatever my cut is. And it usually pulls up super easy. And there you go. And then I just throw that away. And then I have, it's the word joy. So I need to get rid of the middle of the O. So weed that up. And there you 
you go. All the weeding is done. And now I will want to put it onto some transfer tape. So I put the transfer tape down over it. And again, I burnish really hard because I want these letters now to pick up onto the transfer tape and the white backing I'm going to peel away. So now I'm going to remove this from the mat. So I like to flip the mat over and then I kind of peel the mat away from my vinyl just like that and that helps you remove things very easily. And so now I want to remove this white backing and if you burnish well then the letters will peel right up nicely from from the backing onto your transfer tape and then you're left with the word joy so now we're ready to put it on to our wooden house okay so here is the small little wood house and basically I'm just going to line this up where I want the letters to be on the house and I want to make sure that they're in the right hand corner and that they look pretty even so you can see there there they are and then again you want to burnish so now you're wanting to burnish these letters down onto the wood shape and then you just peel back the transfer tape and voila the letters are on there very cool and now to do the other two and here are the final houses with the vinyl applied you have the Mary on the biggest house the Noel on the medium house and the joy on the small house so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like this please hit the like button and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel thank you for watching Makers Gonna Learn, you can find them at makersgonnalearn.com. And this font is called Barefoot Joanna. And they have several different membership options that you can join um, to get cut files and fonts.